Greetings everyone. This particular video is going towards my Christian friends. Uh, there are some people in this world that believe there is no God and they will attack the Christian religions. We are being attacked. We are being ridiculed for our beliefs. We are being pushed aside in the churches. We're being pushed aside in the schools. We're being pushed pushed out of Congress. We don't the society that was built on the foundations of the Bible and God would trust us on our money. We are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. All these foundations that our founding fathers put on our Constitution are now being stripped from us. We say we have the freedom of religion, but yet to have a student try to pray in school, uh, school. oh, we can't do that. We're at the point now in our society where it's okay if you're a Wiccan. It's okay if you're pagan. It's okay if you're anything else but Christian. Now wait a minute. As a veteran, I have fought, I've signed an oath, swore an oath, April 9th, 1989, that I would defend the Constitution. And our First Amendment right is freedom of religion. Very first thing in freedom of speech. We we as Christians believe we've got someone else who's going to judge us for what we do. Therefore, we're going to be held accountable for what we do. There are some people who believe they don't care. But I'll tell you one thing. When you're in a foxhole, when you got bullets flying past your head, you're going to start asking questions. And Lord, if you're up there. And I would rather be prepared for a letdown than be let down because I wasn't prepared. So regardless of whether or not you're a Christian, or whether or not you're a pagan, whether or not you're a Wiccan, whether or not, whatever you are, I would rather be prepared because my life here is short. All of our lives are short. You see obituary columns every day. I've seen uh, my fellow soldiers die in combat. I've seen them come back home, pop a bullet in their head because their wife has cheated on them and they're gone. Um, and I have to say this personally in my own life. I really do. That if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. Okay? That's it in a nutshell. I have to give God all the praise and glory for being here today talking to you. Because there's some things in my life that I weren't, I was not able to handle on my own. So what Christians do, and I want you to understand is why we believe what we believe. We believe that we're held accountable for what we do. The biggest thing Christ tried to teach us is two major rules. He said, if you can follow these two, you'll follow the ten. Very simple. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Very first one. And the second, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. If we do those two, we'll follow the ten. So our God that we're following, the Jehovah, in the Bible, is a God of love. Now, love does not contain hatred. Love does not contain spite. Love does not contain envy. Love not, if you read... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, how love is kind and patient. A lot of times today we're losing that. We all are out, and, and we're, a lot of people are only out for themselves. Christ wasn't out for himself. And if you look at the religious uh, the beliefs between this one and this one, this one, how many other religions out there that could say their God died for you? I only know of one. And when they asked him how much he loved us, he stretched out his arms and said this much. The biggest thing he said to judge not. So I don't judge anybody. You, you want to believe in uh, Greek mythology? You, you want, whatever you want to believe in, it's your choice. I know what I believe in. I know what I stand on. Okay, And I know what I'm going to be judged on one day. And I'm hoping, you know, one of these days, it's, come, it's coming to a time. It really is coming to a time. When the end of time is, 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 is right upon us. Uh, if we look, in the days of Noah, he destroyed the whole world with water. Now, he can't. He won't do that again. He said he won't ever destroy it. That's going to make the rainbow. But one day he's going to destroy it with fire. Now, there's several ways that you can look at that in the biblical sense. Is he going to do it himself or is he just going to let, let it happen? We've got, the United States alone has got the power, the nuclear power, to really obliviate the whole earth. Boom! Gone! We got the nuclear power, we can just <laughs> totally devastate the whole earth. So really, is God going to do it? Or is he going to have, he just going to sit back and let we destroy ourselves? 
But that day's coming. That day is coming. Now, all we're going to do is step back and say, okay, are we ready to go? One day, we'll be in that casket. One day, we'll be in that cold grave. And no matter what we think in this life, it won't matter anymore. The beliefs we have in this life won't matter anymore. What really is going to stand is what stood the test of time over 2,000 plus years. It's still true today. Even Christ said, if you don't believe in me, believe in the works that I do. When he told his disciples who were there with him, who saw his miracles and saw that he turned the water into wine, saw that he walked on water, saw that he raised the dead. He said, if you don't believe in me, believe in what I'm doing. Now, how many gods do you know that would do that? There's coming a time. It's coming very, very close. You can argue with me. You can unfriend me. If you don't like what I'm saying, just don't listen. Okay? It's that simple. You ain't got to unfriend me. You ain't got to block me. But you don't have to listen either. But it's coming a time in my generation, in the time frame that I know I'm going to be alive, that the end of days is coming. There's wars and rumors of wars everywhere. And we've got the power to obliterate a country that quick. I think I heard it said one time, they don't know how they're going to fight World War III. I don't know who said this, but I know some of you will know. They don't know how they're going to fight World War III, but they do know how they're going to fight World War IV with sticks and stones. It's going to be that bad. When you have the Muslims trying to take over uh, as our nation's religion. Well, let me tell you something. If that happens, all these lesbians and gays and transsexuals and all that won't stand a chance because they don't tolerate that. So you might say, well, Christians, well, we don't like Christians because they, they preach against us. Well, these people are going to put you to death. <laughs> and these Christians, we actually believe, we can't tell you what to believe. We really can't. But we can tell you this is what we believe. We may not like certain things, but we know, hey, it's your life, not mine. I'm going to face my judgment on, my, on, on what I do. And the only things Christians are, the only thing that Christians try to focus on is to, hey, we know there's another world coming. We know that there's a God, Jehovah. We know that Satan is Lucifer and he was the right hand of the Father. But what happened was his ego got in the way. People say, well, how can... How can uh, these angels sin if they were in God's presence how could they sin how could they have the arrogance and pride well if Christ came down here and proved that he didn't have any here don't you think the angels up there would have some yes Lucifer in the book of Isaiah was God's right hand man well he stood right next to God okay but he had pride in himself. He says, well, if I was God, I'd do it this way, and I'd do it this way, and I'd do it that way. The Bible is not written in a linear fashion. It's written in a circular fashion. What's happened in Genesis has already happened in Revelations. And what happened in Revelations, you go back to Genesis again. Because when, and even in the book of Isaiah, it talks about how Lucifer, son of the morning, how out there fallen. They kicked, God kicked him out because he fought. In the book of Revelations, you, you read it. He can deceived one third of the angelical realm and they fought against Michael and his angels and they did not prevail. Satan was cast out. But, and one third of the realm was cast out. And he sent Satan to earth. Phew. He wanted to create beings that would follow God out of love, not out of fear. But at the very beginning, Satan was there to try to deceive man very beginning. And Satan's still here now trying to deceive us. From the very beginning. Now, if you look at the book of uh, Genesis, when God told Adam, don't eat. He told Adam, don't eat of that fruit. Now, I bet you every man in the world can agree to this. Adam told Eve, don't eat. Well, how many women looks in the men? Excuse me, Satan went to Eve. Eve ate, gave it to Adam. And ever since then, follow man. Even then, when Adam failed, 2,000 plus years later, all that war is going on, still going on, still going on. They said, who's worthy? Who's worthy to go down? Who's worthy to go down and purge this? We've done flooded the earth once. That didn't work. 
We gave Mo uh, Moses the Ten Commandments. That's not working. What can we do to get the people to understand? So Christ said he's going to come down for us. He will be our mediator. Okay? He is born in a humble manger. Can you imagine being born without even in a hospital? You're in a, you're in a manger, a straw, in a barn. But since day one, since the very day one he was born, that Satan was coming after him. Since the very day one. And even during his ministry of three years, even in his ministry of three years, they tried stoning him, and every time they didn't, he evaded them. He took one of his own disciples to betray him. Christians, you're going to have a betrayer in your midst. That's going to happen. And the more you stand up for God, the more the devil is going to attack you. But Jesus, God, the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Who really can be against you? So we're going to ask, this day and the time we're living in now, with all the technology we have, we're losing sight of what's really important. And what's really important is the human contact, the human kindness, the respect. Who has it anymore? All people are looking at is what, what I want, what I want, I, what I want, what I want. Greed. Even the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. But everybody's looking at for what they want themselves. And they're greedy. Oh, he's got this. I want that. Oh, she has it. Look at divorces. How many times in divorces? Oh, I mean, seriously, I could go a whole, whole video on that one alone. Stop what you're doing. Think. Really. Are we helping someone else along the way? Are we loving our neighbors as, our, as we would our own selves? Are we treating people like they're people? Not like they're somebody who's, oh, you got money. I want it. What are we liking at? The day and time is coming. And if you've ever been a combat vet, if you've ever served a day and time in combat, you know when them bullets fly over your head, as, a, as I've heard as many times, there's no atheists in foxholes. When you get bombs blowing up, bombs blowing up everywhere, you're going to be praying to something. I guarantee you that, Lord, or get me out of here. When you're on your deathbed, gasping for your last air, will you cry out then? Don't be like the rich man who died and was buried. Lip his finger. Lazarus, tip my finger in water. I'm tormented. He says, I can't. There's a great gulf between me and you. He says, well, send somebody down there to tell my brothers. He says, well, they have the prophets. They're not listening to them. Well, send somebody to raise from the dead. Well, they already did that. And they still don't listen. Doubting Thomas. So if I may feel the pierced sides in your hands. Even he was with Christ the whole time. He, was, he still doubted him. And today we're, we're in a generation of doubters. We're in a generation of self-worship. When you put, really put God first... And you realize it's going to open your eyes up more than you've ever thought in this world. When you start caring about someone else other than yourself.